Hi Stampers, this is Karen Phillip. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I'm pleased to show you how to make this easel card and it's perfect for the Christmas season. And this is what it looks like flat and this is what it looks like put together and I have a little tea light that just fits underneath and I don't know if I'll be able to hold it up to the camera but you can kind of, you can see how it looks. Oops, this way. Isn't that pretty? And then it does fold flat for mailing, except they have to get their own tea light, <laughs> unless you want to add it to it. And then here is our little sample for our club members. It's just a baby one. Same idea. All right, now let's get started. This is such a fun set to work with. It's using the Oh Holy Night bundle, and that is the stamp set and the dies. And the stamp set is just words, and then the dies are all of the major set. There is also paper that matches it, and this will be retiring. Uh, it's called um, Oh Holy Night, and these are all the samples of it, but it's nothing like the paper. Let's see if I can find one that has like the scene. If they're like different scenes on it, for example, this one, it has all of the sand on the bottom and the stars on top, and there are several like that. Okay. Another uh, bundle that's with that, it doesn't come with it, but it's part of uh, that set, sort of. It's the stars, and these are called Stars at Night. And there are dies, and this is a hybrid, and it has the star embossing folder, and then these will work with this. Okay, now let's get started. So what we need first is and I'll put all the dimensions, a piece of five and a half by, no, four and a quarter by 11, and it's scored at five and a half and two and three quarters. Well, two and three quarters and five and a half. So we will fold that in half and fold it up and burnish it, because it is sort of, I'm using the thick cardstock, and then just give it a little burnish, and then, we also need a four and a quarter by five and a half piece of white and a piece of four by five and a quarter of the designer paper. And this is like a two by three inch piece of vellum. First, we will need to use the our, our five and a half by four and a quarter and our piece of designer paper. This is a, the way that I'm doing it. Anybody, you can do it however you want, but I'm taking the, I'm looking for my tape, okay. I'm just taking the designer paper and putting one row of adhesive along the top and leaving a, a little bit of a border around it, it's white on white again here, and I'm just putting a quarter or eighth inch border around. So I'm just making that even, pressing it down. Next I'm using this hexagon punch. It will be in the new catalog and it also is on in the online exclusives. So I'm, it, um, the way to show everybody is I, I put this all the way down to the bottom, evened it out on the sides as best you can, and then press both of them. And so you have this piece and this piece, you can use that for something later. Okay, next step is taking our vellum piece. Oh boy, what did I do with it? I just had it. <laughs> there it is. Okay, so I'm taking my vellum piece and I'm opening this up, and this is why we only glued down the first part. And I'm putting adhesive around the inside of the hexagon. doesn't have to be straight and then just laying this over the top like so 
pushing it down. And now we will turn it this way and put adhesive on the back of the designer paper. And I'll show you why we did that. Now we have a nice finished edge here and when they open it up this edge is finished as well. And it's just an easy way to do it. Okay, now we will take our piece that we had folded in half and lifted it up. We will put adhesive on this part, this folded part that was folded back. You can glue it or you can use the tape runners. Now what I found worked the best is starting from the bottom to the top. And you'll hold this down and if you kind of put your hand, your other hand on it just to hold it down and then line it up on the bottom edge and on the side edges that way you're sure to get it straight before you push it down and hold, you're still holding the underneath and push it down and then you have your mechanism and this is going to go like this. Next step is, oh fooey, I forgot to decorate this first but it'll still work. So we will decorate it and I'm using the manger background I guess on, on here but if I put it up like this I didn't like the gap here so I'm cutting off these little bottom post things and now I will glue this on you can use taper glue. The glue works well because you can get more on it without getting all the webbing and it goes pretty quick. You could use the fine tip little thing if you have one. Okay. And I'm putting that even on the bottom of the designer paper, side to side even. And just set that down. Looks kind of crooked. There we go. Oops. That's why I like tape runner sometimes. Okay. Next we will take our manger part of the scene. And now on this part, I'm just, this was done in black. This was done in uh, pecan pie. Right, where's my, there we go. Um, and you'll put a little row of adhesive along the bottom. And, whoops just along the bottom and just along the sides of of the the two people <laughs> okay so you will not put adhesive on Mary and Joseph and Jesus you will not put that on there because it will show through and this way it won't show through the vellum and I'm just setting this even side to side and just at the bottom of our hexagon opening and then when you lift it open you don't see any of the glue okay the next step is I'm just going to put this up I already did the sentiment and it is a 5 8 by 4 and we're putting that on first and it just says join piece, it's in navy. And glue. Okay. And we're putting that along the bottom, again leaving an eighth of an inch around three of the sides, like so. Then I have a piece of designer paper, the brown that's in that set. And and this is four by Two by four. We'll just put that on. Okay. Whichever way you think looks best, it doesn't really matter. And just set that right above that that little border. And then they ha you have plenty of room to write on this part or this part. Then we will take our camel and we this is going to be our stopper and we have some dimensionals and we're putting you want to make sure that the first dimensional is right at the top of the camel and then I just put a couple more on there you don't need to worry about his legs 
if you want to put a piece of one on the head, you just cut off a little piece. And then we'll just put that on his head, like so. This actually is a quick card. And then you can hold it up like that, but this top of the camo will actually be your stopper. And it fits right at the top of the designer paper. And again, you don't have to worry about his legs. If you want to glue them, you can. But you need the dimensional for the camel because that does hold up. That's your stopper for the card, like so. Then I have two sheep. And they are designed to go one way, but I'm putting it one one way and one the other, and it really doesn't doesn't matter. And I'm putting one there, and then I'm making this guy go the other way, just for because I think it looks cool. Oops, I want him down a little bit, and that's it for the card. Oh wait, we have to put a star on top. So the star, I'm. Just putting on top, like so. And then, because we are out of the star, these stars here, um, you could just cut out a gold star out of the dies that I just showed you out of gold, and it'll still look beautiful. Just won't be three-dimensional, and may help in, in postage. I don't know why it keeps going out of sync, I'm sorry. So that's actually the card though. And it's just such a pretty card and with the flashing flickering light underneath, it just really gives it a cool look. So for that special person, or just for yourself, I think it's just a nice option for a Christmas decoration even. So thanks for watching and have a great day.